This is the video of the worked solutions for the integration paper of 2019. Got a fairly straightforward integration to start with, um, and I'm just going to rewrite this in um, index notation uh, first, because that's easier to work with our integration. So then increase the power, divide by the new power, and we get this will go up to x to the half. If we do 2 divided by a half, then we get 4 and plus c. Right, part two is use the values in this table to um, approximate this integration using the trapezium rule. We've just got the trapezium rule up on the screen there above the question. That's on your formula sheet. So we need h, which is uh, b minus a over n. In this case, it would be 5 minus 2 over n. Now, n is how many of those trapezium you have. And remember, each of these points in here, they're all endpoints of a rectangle, so that they're of a trapezium. They're the side parts of those um, columns of trapezia. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six of those trapezia. So it'll be six there. Um, so then if we put that into the formula, it'll look like this. And that comes to 6.8. For part C, we're going to use this um, trig product rule that you have on your formula sheet. So if we had 2 cos 4x cos 2x, we could say that a was 4x and b was 2x. So that would come to cos of um, a plus b, which is 6x, and cos of a minus b, so 4x minus 2x is 2x. So we don't have 2 times that thing, we've just got one of it, so therefore our answer would be half of this thing. Now I'm just going to label that as capital I for that integral there, so I can not have to rewrite it. So that integral then becomes um, the integral between 0 and pi by 12, and then replace with um, this equivalent uh, that we've just done. So we'll take the half out, and then we've got cos 6x plus cos 2x dx. So it's half of uh, one sixth sine six x and one half sine two x. Substituting in those values gives us this, which then simplifies down to five over twenty four. On part D, we want to show that the areas under the curve are equal. Those areas are A and B. So to find area under curve under a curve, we're going to integrate. So for area A, we're going to go between 0 and 5. So A equals the integral between 0 and 5. And our equation is 6, 3x plus 1 to the minus a half dx. Area B will be the same thing, but integrating from 5 up to 16. Now we would need to work through those integrations and show that they are equal. So to integrate this thing, um, we will do um, 3x plus 1, it's reverse chain rules, so increase the power by 1 as the half. Then we need to do divide it by a half and divide it by the 3. So 6 divided by a half um, well, hang on, let's do 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 divided by a half would be 4. So this becomes a 4, and we're going to run that between 0 and 5. And of course, the same here for the b, but we would run that from 5 to 16. And then we'll go ahead and substitute those values in. And we get that they're both equal to 12. We finish with a differential equation. Uh, we've got dn by dt and some details about um, specific values of n1 and n2, and prove this thing. So um, if we're trying to work out and substitute in these n and t values, what we want is um, some expression of n in terms of t. So we need to be able to integrate um, this thing that we've got up here to be able to get that. So first we need to separate the variables, bring the um, n down here ought to be on the same side as dn, 
bring the k up here and leave the k where it is bring the dt up and then we'll integrate both sides of that so on the left hand side we get ln n and on the right hand side side we get kt plus c then we can substitute in the information that we've got so when t is equal to t1 we get uh, this one by putting in n1 and t1 um, for the bits that um, related to each other up here and then also this relationship when we've got n2 with 2t1 now if we rearrange those make c the subject we get these two parts here which we can set to be equal underneath and then continue on our way bringing the t's to one side the n's to the other and then just solving through until we get what we were asked to be shown in the question 2 part a is very straightforward integrate each part so we've got x and uh, e to the 4x itself doesn't change but we would divide through by the 4 so we get a half because that's 2 divided by 4. On part b we've got this um, graph and we're told that it's symmetrical we've got these two parts underneath which would be minus uh, would be 1.2 each we're told if we'd integrated all the way from minus a to a we would get a total of 5.8 now if we did this this bit here would count as a negative above the graph would count as a positive and this below the graph would count as a negative the positive bit in the middle there is the integral from um, minus b to b so we're told if we did that and then took away 1.2 and took away another 1.2 for those bits that would come out as negative that would give us 5.8 therefore that integral we were asked for is 8.2 on part c we've got that our integral we can take out the 8 and differentiate like this uh, makes it a bit easier to see what we're doing so that would become 8 times ln of 2x minus 5 that 2 would come out and become a half we'd have to divide by that um, and that would be between 3 and k so if we tidy that up and work it through knowing it has to equal 10 we can get down to our final solution of what k must be on part d we're finding the area of the shaded region which means we are going to integrate from 0 up to pi of that curve and we need to use our trig formulae to help us to do cos squared so if we rearrange this identity that's on your formula sheet that will help us out uh, with making this something simpler so cos squared x will be cos 2x plus 1 all over 2 so this is the equivalent to half of the integral of cos 2x plus 1 so if we integrate that cos um, integrates to sine and then we need to divide it by 2 then substitute in values now sine of 2 pi is 0 so is sine of um, 0 so we end up actually just with having it half um, and this pi for our final solution of pi by 2 and leave it in that form don't turn it into a decimal for the final part we need that shaded area so we're going to integrate up to this point of intersection here which i will just call i so first we need to find that point of intersection and we're going to set those um, two equations of y equal to each other so e to the x all squared will be equal to 20 minus e to the x squared now that's just the same as e to the 2x 20 minus e to the 2x and if we follow that through we get that x equals half ln 10 at that point of intersection so then to find the area we will integrate between 0 and that point of intersection being half ln 10 and we'll do the top line minus the bottom line so we've got 20 minus e to the 2x subtract e to the 2x dx will give us that area that simplifies like so and if we carry on with that working then we get 20x minus e to the 2x substitute in our values get a final answer of 10 ln 10 minus 9 question 3 part a is reverse chain rule so if we just increase that power by 4 we would then need to do 24 divided by 4 which would give us um, uh, 6 but then we also need to divide by the 2 as well so then that gives us 3 
Okay, part b is solve this differential equation. So first integrate to get y. Sex squared integrates to tan x, so that becomes tan 2x. Then we need to divide through by the 2 to account for that, so we get 2 tan 2x. And substitute in our values of y and x, so we get 5 is equal to 2 tan um, 2 times pi by 8. Oops, I just missed the plus c, so we've got plus c there. Um, so now we can work out what c needs to be. Working that through, we get that c is 3, so therefore our final solution is y equals 2 tan 2x plus 3. Now before we can integrate on part c, we just need to sort out this bit here, the x over x plus 1. So um, if we put that in terms of it being x plus 1 on the top to make that equivalent, we would have to do x plus 1 minus 1 all over x plus 1. So that can be separated out into x plus 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1. Now x plus 1 over x plus 1, that just becomes 1. So now our integral becomes 1 to 4 x plus 1, and then add this bit that we just worked out. So plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1, and simplify it. And now we've got everything in terms that we can actually integrate. So we've got x squared over 2 plus 2x minus ln x plus 1. Um, and we're doing that between 1 and 4. And substituting in those values gives us our final answer like this. Okay, now we need to integrate um, this that we've got here, this expression. Recognize that the top here is something to do with the derivative of the bottom there, because we've got one less power on the top than we have on the bottom. So um, the derivative of the bottom would be 8x rather than 4x. So if we rewrite this as... Um, half of 8x over 4x squared minus 3, then it is now in a form where the top is the derivative of the bottom, which means we can do um, the natural log as the integral. So this is getting differentiated with respect to x. We get half of ln 4x squared minus 3 plus x to the 3 over 2 plus c. And we can use these values here to work out what that c needs to be. So substituting in when x is 1, y is equal to 2 means we can work out c. And I just realized a mistake I made up here on this integration. I forgot to divide by the new power. So that would be um, divided by 3 over 2 there. And this would be over 3 over 2. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference because it was powers of 1. But the dividing by 3 over 2 is important. OK, so um, now if we substitute in those values, work that through, we get the answer that c is equal to 4 over 3. So the value of oops, y4, it happens when x is equal to 4. So we get uh, 4 substituted into this. Um, 4 to the 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 plus c, which is now 4 thirds. And we can work that through and find that y is equal to 8.722. OK, now we have a question here that feels a bit crazy, but actually isn't all that hard once you can figure out what's going on. It's the figuring out that actually makes this an excellence. So we've got the water coming out of um, uh, being pumped out of this inverted pyramid. We, the easy part is they've actually already done the um, integration function for us. We don't need to do rates of change stuff. We just need to substitute in the right values. OK, so take a minute to read that and then we'll start trying to work out those pieces that go into this formula. So the depth is 1, the height is 1.5. Um, then uh, we've got this similar triangle going on. So uh, the relationship between the height and the side at the top is that if we've got a height of h, the side is 0 0.6, which means the area of the surface that we need for this ah part can be worked out by doing 0.6h squared, because it's that square on the top. So it's 0.36h squared. Which means we now have enough information to fill in all of the bits that were required on that formula. And I've substituted them in here. And then we can work it through like so to get our final answer of 1,323 joules.